Hogwarts Legacy released earlier this year for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X, with previous generation console versions arriving three months later. However, the version of the game that has most people interested is the one for Nintendo Switch. After being delayed by three and a half months, the Switch port was finally released on November 14th. So how does a game that caused problems for even high-end machines at launch perform on the Switch's aging hardware? Let's take a look and compare it to the PC version. Let's start with a brief bit of background about the game before we begin. Hogwarts Legacy is a video game that allows players to experience the magic of the Harry Potter universe in a new and original story. Players are able to create their own character and customize their appearance, skills, and personality. They can also choose which of the four houses they wish to join. Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, or Slytherin. Each house has its own unique quests, common rooms, and interactions with other students and teachers. The game is set in the 1800s, a time when the Wizarding World faced many threats and mysteries. Players have to explore Hogwarts and its surroundings, such as Hogsmeade, the Forbidden Forest, and the Overland area. They can learn spells, brew potions, grow plants, and tend to magical beasts. They will also face challenges, puzzles, and enemies, such as trolls, dark wizards, goblins, and more. Hogwarts Legacy is developed by Avalanche Software and published by Warner Bros. Games under its Port Key Games label. Overall, the game has received positive reviews from critics and fans, who praised its combat, world design, characters, variety of content, and faithfulness to the source material, but also noted some technical problems and lack of innovation as an open-world game. To start off the comparison, let's take a look at the install size. The game takes up 72.96 GB on Steam, while the Switch version comes in at just 14.2 GB. This is obviously still quite large for a Switch game, but a massive decrease from the PC version meaning that we can expect to see many instances of downscaled assets. Coming into the character creator, it becomes instantly apparent where some of these savings come from. If we look at the player models side by side with the PC version, the contrast is stark. The hair and face are far less detailed, and shadows flicker all over the body. There are also unsightly jagged lines outlining the character on the Switch model. Since the majority of cutscenes in Hogwarts Legacy are rendered in-engine, we get many opportunities for some great side-by-side -side comparisons. Again, all textures are far less detailed, and the ugly shimmering effect surrounds all character models. There's little to no anti-aliasing on the Switch version, which leads to additional flickering when the camera moves even slightly. Many textures in-game look passable at a distance, but when the camera moves up close, it quickly becomes apparent how low res they are. Take a look at this rock wall as the character climbs it here, and at the stone bricks jutting out of the path here. You can also see how extremely dialed back the foliage and vegetation is between the two. Paintings are also an interesting point of comparison between the Switch and PC versions. Transparent and reflective surfaces seem to be quite solid though. I didn't notice any performance drops, and the textures in this mirror don't look any worse than they do in the non-reflective surface. The rock wall behind it, however, does not look so good. Although most cutscenes are rendered in-game, some of the flashback cutscenes are presented as pre-rendered videos. In the PC version, these are the worst parts of the game, as they're only in 30 FPS and look drastically different from the rest of the cutscenes. On the Switch, though, they actually look better than the in-engine cutscenes, since they don't suffer from the lack of anti-aliasing the rest of the game has. Still on the topic of in-game cutscenes, there can sometimes be some very noticeable pop-in when quickly changing location, as can be seen with these trees suddenly appearing here, or how horrifying almost every texture looks in the dormitory here. After the opening title appears, there's a loading screen which then leads to our character taking part in the sorting ceremony and choosing their school house. On an SSD on PC, this loading screen only lasts 9 seconds. On Switch, however, this loading screen takes 37 seconds. This obviously isn't a surprise, and while it isn't ideal, I've seen far worse loading times on the Switch before. Fast traveling within the castle seems to take slightly shorter, as this one here took just 30 seconds. We've already taken a good look at the playable character's model, but once we reach the dormitory, we get a good chance for some side-by-side -side comparisons of other characters. Take a look at these characters, and compare both their textures and some of the textures behind them. Various animations have obviously been scaled back for the Switch version, and there's a great example right here. 
You can clearly see Peeves' animations change frame rate the closer the player gets to him, and it even drops quite a bit lower as the player gets even further away. When changing the protagonist's appearance with different wearable items, there's a noticeable delay before the new clothing properly applies. This delay is typically only about 3 seconds, but this definitely adds up if the player is changing multiple items in one go. Another delay that's to be expected comes whenever the player approaches a door, leading to a different area of the school. Even the PC version would sometimes briefly pause to load the next area at launch, so it's no surprise that this solution remains on the Switch version. Somewhat surprisingly though, the delays here only last around 2-3 seconds. We've spent a lot of time looking at the textures and character models of the Switch version of Hogwarts Legacy, so now it's time to talk about the part I was most interested in. The performance. Hogwarts Legacy was somewhat infamous for performing quite poorly at times even on high-end machines, so how would the quite dated Switch handle such a taxing game? The answer is… surprisingly well. The game targets 30fps, which is to be expected, and actually manages to hit it a good amount of the time. During the opening section of the game, some very slight 2-3fps dips can be seen when looking at the magic glass texture that the protagonist needs to blast through with magic. Once the wall has disappeared, the game returns to its quite stable 30fps. Even this part here, where Fig repairs a stone bridge that I thought might be a problem for the Switch, remains locked at 30fps. Near the end of the Highland section there's another magic glass wall, and this again causes the game to drop a couple of frames. It also temporarily drops down to around 24fps when first getting in range of the wall loading, but then it raises back up to just below 30. I was also expecting maybe casting Revelio or other spells might cause a slight issue, but these parts in Gringotts also remained at 30fps. Combat has a few extra effects on screen, so I thought we might see some drops there, but again, the framerate manages to stay right at 30. The school itself was always the most troublesome part performance-wise of the other versions of the game, so this is where I was expecting to see more frame drops. The empty dorm rooms remain at 30fps, and so does the decently busy common area of the dormitory. Speaking to Gareth Weasley here also doesn't pose a problem, although from the looks of the texture behind him, this shouldn't be a surprise. You can, however, see a very brief dip when exiting a conversation. It's out and about in the castle where you'll begin to spot the frame drops. Even looking too far up in the central area will cause a couple of frames to drop, but it still holds quite steady at 30fps when solving this incredibly tricky puzzle door. The previously mentioned doors with brief load times do start to cause trouble. A couple of frames will drop when loading the next area, but even when walking around outside in the Transfiguration Courtyard, the game cannot maintain 30fps here at all. The lowest fps I saw here was 23, but it averages around 28fps in the area, which could be a lot worse. You can see some big drops when entering this stinky corridor here, dropping down to as low as 20fps when first entering as some textures load in. It does look like the game is able to recover once the previous area has at least partially unloaded. This happens in multiple different locations, so the game seems to be fine when it's only having to load the current area and not the upcoming or previous areas as the framerate typically drops around doors even if the player doesn't enter them. Leveling up though does cause several frames to drop as the characters become engulfed in their magical effect. Overall, the Switch's performance in Hogwarts Legacy is a pleasant surprise. It's obviously not perfect, but I was expecting much worse from what has proven to be a very demanding title on other platforms. The texture work and graphics in general suffer as a result of this improved performance, but I think everyone knew there would need to be several major compromises in order to port this game to the Switch. It doesn't look amazing, but it does run decently well, so if the Switch is your only way to play Hogwarts Legacy, you needn't avoid it at all. And there you have it, my brief look at the Nintendo Switch port of Hogwarts Legacy. I imagine Digital Foundry will likely have a more in-depth look at this title in the coming days, so make sure you check out their channel if you want to see a similar video to this. I only had the time to look at the first couple of hours of the game in this video, so if there are any issues later on in the game, they'll hopefully be able to showcase them. If you enjoyed this video, please do like it and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.